Welcome to the Kingdom of Ruin, Episode 5. So in this episode, the story takes a step back for a moment and Adonis confesses his love for Chloe. He explains that he can't bring her back to life because he doesn't want her to experience the pain again. He believes there's no place for her in this cruel world. Instead, he replaces Chloe's memories with someone else's, leaving Mophelia curious if Adonis just altered the ritual. It turns out that the witch he revived is Daroka, and he embraces her tightly. As Daroka opens her eyes, she realizes she's in the witch's nation. Confused about how she got there, especially since she was shot, she notices she's completely naked. Feeling embarrassed, she apologizes to Adonis for exposing herself. Adonis kindly hands her a shirt to cover up and expresses his gratitude for saving his life in Redia, assuring her that they are now even. Daroka is curious about Chloe's whereabouts, while Ophelia questions Adonis about his actions. She reminds him of the witch's sacrifices to protect him and bring Chloe back to life, and asks why he would disregard their efforts. The other witches express their distrust of humans and speculate that Adonis may not truly love his master. Ophelia even wonders if Daroka influenced Adonis's decisions. Adonis reveals that he was the one who decided not to bring Chloe back to life. Ophelia questions who Adonis is trying to impress, considering he's just a young kid. Suddenly, Ophelia notices teleport gates surrounding them and wonders if Adonis had something to do with it. Adonis explains that he has been a prisoner for a long time and reveals a tracer inside his body. As they reach Lunamilia, human soldiers arrive and set fire to the middle tree. Yamato declares that the witches are now trapped like rats in a cage. Adonis confesses that he invited them to this graveyard. In an attempt to extinguish the fire, an ice witch is killed by the soldiers. They communicate through their calms, reporting the presence of several witches. Ophelia then turns to Santa Maria, asking her to use her magic. With Santa Maria's powers, all the witches transform into their battle attire. Ophelia rallies them all to attack. In the meantime, Yamato is struggling with Adonis. And Adonis takes advantage of this by using his magic to shoot Yamato with his gun, sending Yamato into the air. Adonis believes that this weapon is very powerful and hits Yamato with several more shots, and Yamato's protective suit protects him somewhat, but the damage continues to accumulate. Adonis asks Yamato to get up because he thinks that Yamato has come to kill him and Daroka prevents Adonis from continuing to shoot. In the meantime, Gem Witch Crystal Maya uses gem magic to capture several human soldiers and gem crystals and the Swarm Witch, Griana, uses centipedes to deal with some humans, while the Venom Fang Witch uses her magic to turn into a snake and kill some humans. The other witches are also using their magic to take down as many humans as possible. Ophelia effortlessly lifts all the remaining humans into the air, leaving them defenseless. Despite their attempts to shoot her, the bullets are mysteriously diverted from their intended target. Ophelia then gathers the humans together, forming a massive ball and mercilessly crushes them, ensuring their demise. With a triumphant declaration, she asserts that victory belongs to her, as the feeble humans stand no chance. Suddenly, more humans appear, teleported to the scene, and they manage to eliminate some of the witches. Ophelia quickly realizes their strategy to outnumber them. The scene transitions to a meeting among the directors of various Redia agencies. Dynasma, the director of the National Authority Bureau, questions Theta about the surprising number of surviving witches, considering they were supposedly eradicated a decade ago. In response, Theta presents a picture of a prototype called Minus 89, a physical transfer device that was discarded into space after its use in the witch extermination operation. From the pictures, it is evident that the witches have managed to seize control of this device. Dynasma comes to the realization that the witches have utilized their scientific knowledge to escape into the vastness of the skies. Theta confirms this and expresses her regret for not realizing it sooner. She explains that the witch's structure on the moon remained hidden from the radars due to a magical camouflage. This revelation leaves Dynasma pondering how the National Science Bureau could make such a mistake. Despite receiving a substantial annual budget, he questions how they could allow such a blunder to occur. The general public believes that the witch extermination wars concluded a decade ago, and this failure will have consequences far greater than just Theta's life. The director of the National Intelligence Agency, Shira Yusaji, reassures everyone that they can address that concern at a later time. He emphasizes the importance of ending the current situation as people have had enough of the witch hunts. The story then takes us back in time, where Yamato expresses his worry for Yuki after her exposure to DM particles. He confides in Theta, mentioning that Yuki has always been there for him. Not only did she join him at the National Security Bureau, but she also became the youngest vice director when he assumed the role of director. He admires his sister's incredible abilities and acknowledges that bureaucracy may not be her ideal fit, but she embraced it nonetheless. The director Theta assured him that everything would be fine at that moment. She mentioned that they would be saved if they allowed the National Science Agency to handle things. 
He points out that Yuki is just 14 years old, and in the present, Yamato declares that all of this is Adonis' fault. He then adjusts his suit's output to 500%, and stands up to confront Adonis once again. Adonis attempts to shoot him, but Yamato is now quicker and lands a powerful punch on Adonis. He declares that it is Adonis who will meet his end today and wonders how he, as a human, could have sided with the witches. Garova checks in on Adonis, making sure he's okay. In response, Adonis advises her to keep a close eye on Yamato. Suddenly, Yamato charges up for a devastating attack, contemplating a peaceful life with his sister. Once this battle concludes, with a swift slash, he takes down most of the witches including Ophelia, Crystal Maya, and Doroka. However, it turns out that the only one he managed to strike was a duplicate of Doroka, created by Anna's death cancel spell. Anna expresses gratitude towards Doroka for being a true friend, but we can see that the slash also affected her. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the humans lose their video feed and urgently request updates from their forces stationed on the moon. On the moon, we see Doroka in the pool of the witch's blood and she mourns the passing of her beloved friend Anna. She asks why this is happening to her and she feels that she can no longer bear it. We also see that Yamato is still fighting with Adonis and Adonis declares that he will destroy Yamato. Yamato informs the people that they have destroyed the witches and now all that is left is to destroy the witch's apprentice. Adonis uses magic to create armor around his hands and he strikes at Yamato with his punches. Yamato blocks but Adonis increases his armor and strikes again. This time he breaks Yamato's sword and also injures Yamato. He heals his body with his suit and also regenerates his sword. Upon seeing this, Adonis says that science has tricks and Yamato attacks with his sword and Adonis blocks it. The remaining witches believe that they are finished. Ophelia, who is barely hanging on, urges the witches not to lose hope. However, the witches believe that all is lost now that the MITO is destroyed and no new witches can be born. Dakia steps in and encourages the witches to persevere, emphasizing that they cannot afford to lose any more of their comrades. She suggests rallying behind Adonis. Tragically, Dekia is then slain by one of the humans. Meanwhile, on the opposing side, Yamato intensifies the electrothermal power of his suits to summon a devastating tornado. Adonis is sent flying by Yamato's attack, and then Yamato pierces him with his sword. Adonis retaliates by creating a giant sword with a spell and uses it to cut off one of Yamato's arms. Yamato uses his suit's healing powers to stop the bleeding, and Adonis notices that they both have a look of revenge in their eyes. Meanwhile, the other soldiers eliminate the remaining witches and Yamato declares that Adonis must be killed as he poses a significant threat. He moves in for the final blow and the scene shifts to the humans at the National Science Agency headquarters who are left wondering about the fate of the leaders of the charge. They are curious about the absence of a video and the workers explain that their cameras are currently not functioning. They start to question if their team has been eliminated, but the soldiers assure them that this is not possible since Director Yamato was with them. Eventually, they are able to recover a video feed, and in the video, Yamato informs them that he has a message for his colleagues on the surface. He reveals that all the witches on the moon's surface have been eradicated. The remaining parts will be available on my channel. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more Anime Recap updates.